Hi everyone, this is Terry. If you're a member of my Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire group, you know we have monthly challenges. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of those challenges, but this is also part of the new owner series. So this video is going to serve two different purposes. You can see that I have the face of a clock design here. I've already stitched out my design. Here it is. Let me zoom you in so you can really see the lovely detail here. And what I have, and I'll back this up again, I have a piece of muslin. I use some shape flex, ironed it onto the back, piece of tearaway. I have another piece of tearaway. And what I'm going to probably do is take this to a framer and ask them for some suggestions on putting this all together. Now I did buy a clock face and the parts for a clock, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one. This one actually has a pendulum, and if I use it, I'll spray paint it. The one thing about this particular clock is it's rather thick. You can see the profile here. So this would need to be on something that's a, like a shadow box or stand out from the wall, and that's why I want to take it to a framer to talk to them. And I may also want to have some larger hands. You can buy larger hands, and I could also spray paint those. All right, so let's look at our design, and let's talk about how this was created. I'll move you back, and let me get you lined up. So we're going to go ahead and close this window. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's just uh, delete everything. By the way, this is at 200%. You can do that. And I'll just go to home so we can start fresh. Now, what we're going to do is go into embroidery. And the first thing we're going to do is to establish the size of the circle that I want to use as my clock face. So I'll go into shapes. I chose number 10, I chose set, I went to edit, I went to size, and I'm going to resize this. If you've been watching my videos for the new owner series, some of this is going to be something that you already know, but these lessons build on one another, so you need to make sure you watch everything in its entirety. So here we have that size. You can't get to a perfect six inch, but this is close enough. Now what I want to do is go up to my settings. I want the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop, but I do want to use this grid and I'll choose okay. Now we're going to choose add. We'll go into the letters and we'll choose category two numbers. And I want the number one and two, but I want this to be a medium sized font. So I'll choose set. Now I want to move that. You'll notice it's grouped together in a box. I can zoom in so you can see it. And you can see there's a red outline here. I'm going to go to edit and move it up above that line. Now you can also move this with your hand or with a mouse, but I, I want to be precise since this is going to be a clock. All right, we'll choose OK. Now we're going to go back and choose add. And again, we're going to go back to category two and pick out the letter. We want to pick the number three. We want it to be medium and we'll choose set. Again, we'll go to edit and go to move and move it over. And by the way, you can also move under size. So we'll just move that into position. If it's too far, don't worry about it because we're going to pull up a grid in a moment and make sure this is all correct. Now we're going to go back to category two, section two, go back to those numbers. We want the number six, medium, and set. And again, go to edit. This time let's go to size and let me show you that you can move in size as well. All right, we'll just continue and get that into position. We'll choose OK, let's choose Add. Now we're going to go back to the numbers. We'll go to category two. We'll go to the numbers and we want the number nine. So let's select nine, medium, set. Go to edit, go to move and we'll move that in. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a grid and what that grid is going to allow us to see is if we have these set precisely. So this time let's choose a 3 8 inch grid and you'll see that there's a line here and what I want to do is to select each one of these and move it to that line. Now you can go to select here. You don't have to back up. So that's one thing I want to mention to you. So I now have the selection box around the number 12 and I'll move it so it's against the line. We'll move the arrow and we're at number three. We need to move that in closer. Now let's go to number six. We need to move it up. All right, that's perfect, and we'll choose OK. At this point, I want to save this, because what I, if I save this, I can use this for other clock designs. Now, I'd like to remove that grid in the background, so let's remove the grid. And now what we're going to do is to get a solid frame. Now, let's just go ahead and look at the dimensions of this. You can see this overall design is 7.56 by 7.29, but we already know that inside circle is six inches. So what I'm going to do is just go to home. All right, and now we're going to select an embroidery design. What I did is I went into category one, category four, and I selected the, uh, one of the mandalas. I chose number nine. You could use number 10 as well. It just really uh, depends on what you want to have on the face of your clock. I mean, you could actually use any design that you want and have it on the face. I like the mandala because it reminds me of a compass. We'll choose set. Now I want to go to edit go to size and I need to resize and recalculate. So we're going to recalculate this design and we're going to move it in and it needs to be less than that six inches. So I'm taking it in until I hear that double click. That's 5.59 by 5.62. And it looked nice on the design that I created. I'll just go ahead and choose okay. Now here comes the fun part. If you go into the thread colors, you can go into what's called color shuffling. You'll notice that I have the Isocord palette selected. If you go into your settings and go to page nine, you can choose your thread color or thread brand. Most of my threads are Isocord, so I selected the Isocord chart and I selected by number because that's easier for me to use. So it opened up with that isochord chart. I'm going to go into color shuffling. And you can tell right now this design has one, two, three, four, five distinct colors. And what I can do is use these colors that came up and I can have it go in and create either random, vivid, or gradient. Let's go to random and it is using colors that I actually pinned and selected. Now, these are colors that I selected earlier. I'm picking out some threads that were colors that I like. And the reason I chose these threads, quite honestly, is because I have a painting on my wall. It's actually just a little piece of artwork. I love animals and I like those colors. So I selected these colors. So let me show you how you can do this if you, if you opt to do the color sh shuffling and add a color. You'll notice that I have the pin here. So when you select something, you're pinning it and that becomes one of the five colors. So you can see the color number there. And if I wanted to change a color like that second color, I can scroll down and decide what color I want to use. Let's say I wanted to use this deep purple, I could do that. And in fact, we'll just, change some of the theme of this. Um, we'll leave the red and what we'll do is we'll eliminate this. We'll choose this darker purple here and let's go down here and actually we're going to choose a lighter purple. So we have two light purples. We'll go down here to 2101 and we're going to change that to a kind of dark grayish color and choose okay. 
So here are the colors that we have. Just by selecting those colors, I really like this one. This is a feature that you have as if you have Upgrade Kit 1. You can choose your favorites. So I'll pick my favorites on this screen. And I like those three. Now choose Refresh. And you get another series of designs. I like this one. And I also like this one. I'll choose Refresh. Now this will go up to several different pages where you can select the designs that you like. Choose Refresh again. And you, you can pick from, the, from these colors. Once you've decided that you've selected enough, and by the way, it will go up several pages, you can choose favorites. Now you have these favorites on the screen. So let's just look at one. And you can see what those colors look like. That's really vibrant and, and it's pretty. You can audition these. And I really like that one. And here's another one that's really pretty with those golds. But I think this is one of my favorites. And let's back up. You need to think about what color your clock hands are and whether, whether it's going to show up against those clock hands. That's probably my least favorite. This one is nice if you're into pastels. I like this. This is somewhat neutral. We'll choose set. So here's that design, and I've used the color shuffling to use it. So now if I wanted to go on and add that clock face to it, I'll choose add. I'll go into my pocket, grab that clock face, and here we go. I'm ready to stitch out this design. Now, I do want to show you a couple of other things under color shuffling, though. So what we're going to do, let's just go ahead and delete that clock face. And we may need to delete a couple of times because we have the numbers here because I don't have it grouped together. My suggestion to you is to group it together, by the way. That's something I missed and I should have done. But you can see now I still have that design. So let's go to edit. Let's go back and let's go to color shuffling. So we had those five colors. What happens if we went to random and this time we choose auto? Auto is going to pick out its own colors. So here's some, a completely different palette. And wow, there's some really pretty ones here, aren't there? So let's choose Refresh. And just look at the colors that are, are appealing to you. And we'll choose Refresh again. And I like something that's somewhat dramatic. And I made a mistake. So if I, I choose Cancel, it'll take me back. And I can select this the one that I wanted. We'll go ahead and choose refresh. And if you wanted to go back to that previous screen because you have another one you like, uh, you can select it. We'll choose refresh again. And we'll choose another one. And again, you can keep on going. Now you may find that you, you've selected too many favorites. If you did, just deselect one by going back to, to through the pages choose your favorites and now what you can do is select one of these and you can scroll through them just to decide which one you want this is a great idea for making christmas presents isn't it let's choose cancel and we'll choose return and we'll go ahead and choose cancel again and cancel one more time now what happens if you go into vivid when you go into Vivid, you can see the colors that it's selected. And those colors are, are very pretty. And what you can do is you can select one of the color sets. You can choose Refresh, choose a different one. And you can go through this the same way that you did with the previous examples. We'll go into Favorites, and here's those three designs. We'll choose Cancel again and Return. And for those people who do not have Upgrade Kit 1, you will not be able to select your favorite. So if you don't see it on your machine, it's because you don't have the Upgrade Kit. Now, the next example that I'm going to show you is Gradient. 
With gradient, you can do auto or manual. We'll let it, it go ahead and select auto. And here's an example of what these colors look like. So you can see that the colors are gradient based on a, a thread family. So I really like this one. We'll choose refresh. Here's another one we'll select. We'll choose refresh. And we'll choose one more. And let's go to favorites. And here you can see what these designs look, look like. Okay, let's cancel out of that and return. And let's cancel one more time and cancel again. This time we're gonna look at soft and you can see these are softer pastel colors. You can refresh and if you are into pastels, you can pick one that you really, really like. I like this one. You can tell that I tend to like bolder colors. We'll just select a few of them and we'll choose that one as well. And now we'll go to favorites and now you can see those designs. I'm Terry Maffitt. I hope this video has been helpful to you. In a subsequent video, I'll show you how I put everything together or how I decided to finalize this clock with all the working parts. And if you like my videos, like and subscribe to my channel and join us in my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. Thanks and have a great day.